알싸 성공 12월 10일 평안북도 설산군 서일 이성 발사장에서 군 김정은 원수님께서 하신 새 신년사는 전체 이민군 장병들과 이민들과 함께 네, 발이 닳도록 뛰고 또 뛰는 그런 일꾼으로서의 올해 신년사에서 우리 경호 부문에서 생산 공동들이 시인세요. In this video, we're going to be driving the 2017 Kia Soul Turbo. The Kia Soul's been around for a while, since around 2009. It was intended to compete with the other box-shaped cars like the Scions and the Nissan Cube. The Nissan Cube and the Scion line are completely gone, but the Kia Soul keeps on chugging along, selling about 150,000 units per year. Not only is the Soul one of Kia's best sellers, it's also one of their best cars too. I've driven a lot of these over the years and had very few complaints. Up until now, you had two engines to choose from. The base 1.6 liter, putting out 130 horsepower, rate 24 to 30 mpg, which got 27 mpg in the real world. Or you can move up to the 2 liter, putting out 164 horsepower, Rate 23 to 31 MPG, which also got 27 MPG in the real world. Now Kia is giving us a nice third choice, a turbocharged 1.8 liter putting out a healthy 201 horsepower, 195 foot-pounds of torque. The MPG rating is actually better at 26 to 31 MPG. I've been driving this for about 120 miles, averaging 27 MPG. And like other turbocharged engines that require premium fuel, he has designed this to run on standard unleaded gas, which will save you a bit of money in the long run. And since all three engines get the same fuel economy in the real world, I say fork up the extra money and get this turbo, but hey, that's me. The base Kia Soul with the cheapy engine and manual transmission runs around $16,000. This one, a bit more, but very reasonable, and we'll look at that price sticker right now. I'm not going to read everything, I'll just scroll down and let you read it. Here's the beginning price. Here's the total cost, which is a pretty good deal considering all the equipment you're getting. If you watch my videos, you know one of the first things we do when you get a vehicle is take it out at night and test the headlight performance. And we're going to do that right now. It's dark enough, so we'll check out the headlights and see how they perform. Here we have the headlights on a building 100 feet away with the low beams. Bright enough. A bit on the low side. High beams. More than sufficient. Here we have the high beams on the building 300 feet away. Plenty of light. Go to low beams. Barely reaches out. More than adequate for city use. And I see we have a John and his hooker. These strip clubs around the corner, and this is where they go. If it's a rockin', don't come a knockin', right? These headlights will be more than adequate for backcountry roads. Just be sure not to run over any hookers. <laughs> the second thing I always do with the vehicle is check under the door where the rocker panels are and see how wide the bodywork is. And this is my one major complaint with this vehicle, and that is the width we're looking at here. Number one, this is very wide at around nine inches. It means every time you step out of the vehicle, your pants leg are rubbing on the edge. Which brings us to problem number two, the edge is exposed to the outside. So all this dirt and mud that's going to cling here is going to get on your pants. 
And worse, number three, we have what I call the dirt shelf, two and a half inches wide. More mud, more filth to get on your pants. This is not a big problem for me because I live in a dry climate, but if you live where there's a lot of mud and snow on the road, you better keep some paper towels and Windex handy because you're going to have to keep this clean if you want your pants to stay clean anyway. So let's look at the rest of the interior. The rear seats offer enough room for two full-size adults. This is the rear storage area. Plenty of room, even more if you fold the seats down. This particular vehicle did not come with a spare tire, just a crappy tire inflator kit. I suggest you get a real tire back here. In the meantime, this is why I brought my Super Duty Tire Inflator Air Pump Kit. Saved my butt a lot of times. Here we have a nice gauge cluster. The steering wheel buttons are nice and large. Easy to use if you're wearing gloves. Two 12 volt outlets. A very simple to use climate control system. One of the largest glove boxes I've ever seen in a compact car. Hey, if the Kia Soul can do it, why can't the other compact cars do it? More storage in the center console. All right, enough show and tell. It's time to do some driving. The suspension you get on the Kia Turbo Soul is basically the same you get on the standard Kia Soul. All they did is add bigger wheels and tires. Since this was such a nice handling car to begin with, I guess that's all they really needed to do. Let's take a little trip on the turning circle, shall we? Doing pretty good. The power steering is quick and responsive. Like all cars we test, we have a speed bump test. I know these big tires and wheels are going to be making a lot of clumping noises. Let's try 20 miles per hour. Here's speed bump number one. Ooh, heard that one. 25 miles per hour on the next one. Another one, and the big nasty one. Ooh. Just for the record, that was some loud thumping and some heavy impacts, all due to these bigger tires. But the suspension did a great job of absorbing it, and it's a very stiff body structure. So in daily driving on city streets, it's not really an issue. These big wheels and tires do result in a stiff ride on the Soul Turbo, but when you're running 201 horsepower out of a light front-wheel drive car, you need all the stiffness you can get. So I'm not complaining. By the way, the transmission is a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic that can be shifted manually. Unfortunately, we don't get any paddle shifters on the steering wheel. But this is a pretty good gearbox. Really don't need to shift manually, not with all the torque coming from the turbo engine anyway. When it comes to 0 to 60 acceleration, there are no complaints here. This car is very, very peppy. With some excellent brakes, too. The Soul is a nice highway cruiser. You do get a bit of thumping with those heavy tires on rough pavement. And being a boxy shape, there is some wind noise. But other than that, it's reasonably comfortable and excellent high speed stability. Welcome to Bike Week.
You know, I've been driving this for four days and it just dawned on me there are no emblems on the outside to let people know you're driving the turbo version. So what's the difference? Well, maybe the red stripes. Certainly the bigger wheels and tires. Maybe the stool tip exhaust. If you're looking for a transportation point A to point B car, the base Kia Soul is more than adequate. But if you're looking for a vehicle to get on the back roads and you need engine power and firm handling, the Kia Soul Turbo fits the bill just fine. This would be more entertaining if we had paddle shifters on the steering wheel. That's not going to happen for the 2017 model year. If you're looking for a compact car with lots of power, excellent handling, a proven reliability record at a reasonable price, the Kia Soul Turbo is absolutely worth a look. And number three, if you get one of these, nothing beats bright red paint. Looks better than any other color on a Volkswagen.